Hey everybody, welcome to Lore Friday for January 28th, 2022. I'm your host, DM Galavan. Today we're going to be looking at the next adventure from the Out of the Abyss campaign. This one is called The Oozing Temple. But before we get to that, I'd love it if you would subscribe to the channel, like the video, share the video, click the post notification bell so that you get notified every time new content drops on the channel. All right, so this particular adventure, The Oozing Temple, still comes out of Chapter 2 from the campaign. And this one is really best geared for level 2 characters, so we're still right in the middle of the Tier 1 aspect of the campaign. The theme of this campaign is they're trying to escape from a an environment that is slowly but surely going to kill them if they stay there too long. The setting of this is an ancient ruined temple somewhere in the Underdark, and they get trapped here after a cave-in and they realize very shortly after that cave-in that water is rising uh, inescapably inexorably constantly and if they don't find a way out of here they're gonna drown or they're gonna run out of air whichever comes first the teaser for this one is there's a tremor that shakes the bedrock around you collapsing part of the ceiling of the tunnel you're in Either falling debris or the shaking ground knocks you to the floor, but when the shaking stops, you find that you are not quite dead yet. You might have been injured by some falling debris, or you might have been able to escape it. Unfortunately, the tunnel ahead of you and the tunnel behind you are both completely blocked as hundreds of thousands of tons of earth have collapsed. However, the tremor has revealed a passage in the wall that was not there before. One that looks in on an ancient tunnel of worked stone. What kind of place have you discovered? Well, as you enter this new tunnel, the walls glisten wetly. Water appears to be seeking into this complex from somewhere, and bit by bit, it seems to be covering the floor. Now, from the beginning, this adventure should give players a sense of urgency that water is gradually coming in and will start filling the area completely. In fact, the water seeps in at the rate of a foot per hour, and the ceilings are only 10 feet tall. So within a matter of a few minutes, they should probably start to notice that the floors of all of these areas are covered with a little bit of water and that water begins to rise ever so slowly. You know, if you think about a foot an hour, you think that's a little over an inch every 10 minutes. So you could basically have them walking around and realize, okay, after just a couple of minutes, every step you take, there's a splash, 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 splash. And you look down and yeah, there's still water seeping down the walls and now it's covering the floor completely. You can give them this sense and that will start to make them feel, okay, we better find a way out of here. As the PCs advance through these tunnels, they will come across areas of worked stone and areas of rough stone. Then there are some patches of the wall that look like melted stone, neither worked nor rough. And getting closer to those areas might reveal that the stone is not stone at all. It's actually areas that are covered by gray oozes. And these oozes are deadly monsters that will destroy flesh and much more if they are touched. Eventually, as the PCs make their way through this complex, they will get a telepathic communication from a creature with childlike wonder and inquisitiveness. It will ask the PCs about themselves and it will introduce itself as Glabagool. Upon meeting the creature, the PCs learn that this Glabagool is a sentient gelatinous cube. Now, Glabagool is neither hungry nor hostile, and it will ask if it can be friends with the adventurers. 
Now, Glabagool is an unwitting link to the plot of the overall campaign. Now, the monster doesn't realize, but the presence of Jubilex in the Underdark is what is causing this ooze to gain sentience. It's one of the hallmarks of Jubilex is that when when he gets into an area that there's a radius around him in which random oozes will develop sentience. People who know a lot of lore about that, they might begin to think, oh, a sentient ooze. I wonder if Jubilex is nearby. Glabagool may follow the PCs around if they don't attack it, and if they get hopelessly lost, it might be able to guide them to the chamber with the only exit at the DM's discretion. The cube is holding the remains of its last meal, a partially digested drow, and the drow's belongings, which include some coins and a magical weapon. There are many dangers in this temple, and there's a time limit. The adventure includes notes on the usable air supply and the rate that the water rises, which all means the party could drown or suffocate if they don't find how to escape this area. Now, speaking of escape, the, the design of this makes the escape not intuitive or obvious. The reason being that the only escape route means flooding the entire complex and swimming into the bed of an underground river, which is the source of the water that's flooding the complex in the first place. You're asking the players to intuit that the way out is to swim up into the water that's flooding this. I mean, they have no idea how deep the water is or anything like that. So since it's the Underdark, they can't look up and see that, oh, there's light from the sky or anything like that. So it's a very, it's not very intuitive how they're supposed to get out of here. In addition to the oozes on the walls and the risk of drowning or suffocation, there are traps in this complex that feature even more oozes that will happily digest and consume any party members that fall to their doom. Thinking about this, putting the players in an environment where the environment itself is eventually going to kill them if they don't find a way out, that's a really kind of dark environment and there should be a sense of doom and dread that is in there. Globagool is going to come along and be some comic relief maybe, depending on how you choose to play Globagool as the DM. To help you describe sort of this doom and dread of the water rising and just sort of how that's an inevitable fate that, aw that awaits the PCs, it might be helpful as the DM to go back and watch portions, scenes of the 1997 film Titanic. Now, I would point you to moments in that film where various characters are either in the hold of the ship or in the corridors on the lower decks of the ship shortly after it strikes the iceberg and you know where they may be going down a corridor and then they see the other way just sort of this slowly rising water that's coming towards them and the fact they're in a confined corridor a tight space and this water just is advancing 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 towards them that could help you maybe describe the sense of claustrophobia and impending doom and all that kind of stuff that the actual characters might feel even if the players around the table are not feeling that there's another change that the DMs may need to make on the fly that has to do with the way out of the final chamber now, as it's written, the PCs are supposed to get into this final chamber, and somehow they're supposed to realize that, oh, that crack in the ceiling where the water is coming in, if that crack were larger, we could get out through it. So we'd better get to work trying to enlarge that crack. That's not necessarily something that all of your players are going to figure out. If they really struggle with that, if they if Glavagul 
has to lead them to the right place. And then they're just literally floundering around in there and don't have any idea how they are supposed to escape. You might just wind up having to have more of the ceiling collapse. Now, you're, you are well within your right if you choose to do that, sort of as a punishment for the players of not figuring out what they're supposed to do. You could make them make some deck saves, and if the water is deep enough that they're already swimming, maybe they get disadvantage on those deck saves as part of that ceiling collapses. And, you know, you want to be careful about how much damage you say it would do to them. It, you don't want it to be damage that would necessarily kill them just when they're about to get out. But, you know, damage it might do 1d6, 1d4, maybe 1d8 hit points, depending on how many hit points your characters have and whether they've already taken some damage uh, elsewhere in the uh, in this complex. Obviously, when that opening widens, it's going to mean the water comes in much faster. They do write in that once everything equalizes, Glabagool will squeeze up through the crack and rise up into the water. So if you make that opening wide enough, when it starts to go up, you may also say that Glabagool will telepathically say to the characters, follow me, as it goes up, and then they'll realize they are coming up into the bed of an underground river, and they reach the surface, and as they float down the river, they eventually find a chamber where they can get out of the river on the bank and continue their journey. That's just the thing you're going to have to decide how to handle as a DM at your table. The most common enemy you're going to find, literally, the only enemy you are going to find in this particular adventure are oozes. And the toughest encounter that you may run into is a black pudding, which is a CR4 monster. And if you're really unlucky, there are ways you can get multiple black puddings in a single encounter, which is one black pudding is a is a tough encounter for a CR2 party. You get multiple black puddings. Yeah, that could spell a TPK pretty easily. The special creatures or items that are in this particular adventure include Glabagool itself, which is an inquisitive and friendly gelatinous cube, a CR2 monster. There's also some magic items here, a couple of magic weapons and a couple of potion vials. My favorite elements of this adventure include the map of the temple ruins. Now, this map can be placed in any setting where you need a partially worked subterranean, subterranean structure. As written, the entire adventure acts as a slow-acting death trap. Between the rising water and the dwindling supply of breathable air, if the PCs can't find a way out of the area, they will all die. And if the flooding chamber of the final room doesn't fit your campaign, you can easily modify the description to allow another way out. An easiest homebrew adaptation, this adventure is suitable for any campaign where you might want a fully or partially buried ruin, and that could be in a hillside, in you know, under a mountain, in a mine of some sort, or in the underdark where this particular adventure is already set. Oozes have been around ever since the rules of original D&D. Even back before AD&D, you had oozes that were described as the cleanup crew. The reason that you would go into dungeons that have been untouched for hundreds of years and find them pristine and not full of dust and cobwebs and everything, well, it's because these oozes go along through the dungeon and periodically clean everything up. Because oozes have been around since the very beginning of the game, you can use this particular adventure with any edition of D&D. All right, that's going to do it for our look at the oozing temple. Now, next time, we are going to take a look at the adventure called Hook Horror Hunt. Now, you may recall that in the previous Lore Friday, I said that that was going to be the next one. 
mea culpa, I got the order of the leveling mixed up. So this one is the one that comes right after the Silk Paths. Then after the Oozing Temple comes the Hook Horror Hunt. And that is if you consider these adventures in order of level difficulty. If you've watched this far, thank you so much. Please go ahead and subscribe to the channel, like the video, share the video, and click that post notification bell so that you get notified every time new content drops on the channel. Thanks again so much for watching, and we hope we will see you here next time on Lore Friday. Good night, everybody.